neighbor, say neighbor. 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 You are blessed. You are blessed. Neighbor. 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 You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. Shall we welcome those who are joining us by the way of Peter and whoever they are hearing us from? Shall we clap for them? Amen. So whenever you are hearing us from, we we love you. We welcome you and uh, we just speak these words of love to you, saying, get the Bible, the pain with you, so that we may adventure together in the word of God and. We are going to be blessed by the message. Amen. 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 Say neighbor. 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 I am. I am. I am. I am. What the word of God. What the word of God says I am. Says I am. Neighbor. Neighbor. I'm not a failure. I'm not a failure. Neighbor. Neighbor, I'm not a loser. I'm not a loser. Neighbor, neighbor, I'm above. 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 Nothing. 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 Nothing can bring me down. Can bring me down. Hallelujah. Amen. Wonderful. So, as I was seated at home, then I just began to reflect on the word of God. I began to reflect on the word of God. I had this on my mind that I'm just supposed to, 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 to write something, to write something. This is just something that came upon my heart. And uh, I wrote something to do with Jesus, the message of the scriptures. Tell the neighbor, say neighbor. 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 Jesus. 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 The message. The message of the scripture. Of the scripture. Jesus is the message of the scripture. Whenever you are studying the Bible, starting from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible talks about one man who is in Jesus Christ. The Bible is not divided. The Bible is not the book who talks about many things. The Bible is organized. The Bible is a material that is organized. In Yanja, we call it the separated book, isn't it? Separated book, meaning... It is not like any other book, any other book, no. It is a separated book which cross over centuries and centuries talking about one person who is Jesus Christ. And we are going to review Jesus Christ today. We are going to see how he has been mentioned across the span centuries of the Bible. We are going to understand who is this Jesus to us. Oh my God, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15. How that from a child you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise unto salvation. You need to know the scriptures. Tell your neighbor. Say neighbor. 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 You need to know scriptures. 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 See, you need to know scriptures. Don't, don't know scriptures for memory verse. No scriptures for your benefit. No scriptures for your usage. No scriptures for your triumph. Because in this world, you need to know the scriptures. You need to know the scriptures. And when you know the scriptures, there is the way the scripture profits you. They profit you in the way of salvation. They profit you, meaning scriptures, they profit. To profit is to benefit. Meaning you need to know, if you want to, you want to live a life of benefit here on earth, no scriptures. If you want to live a life of triumphant here on earth, no scriptures. If you want to live the life that is supernatural here on earth, no scriptures. No scriptures. You should learn to know scriptures. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Second Timothy, or oh, not second Timothy, sorry. I'll go to the book of Jeremiah now. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. Yes, sir. All right. Scripture says in Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. Mm -hmm. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, mm -hmm. which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. This was God saying, I'll give you pastors according to mine own heart. They are the one I will select. Now, these pastors I'm going to give you, what 
is their duty? What are they going to teach? Or what are they going to do to you? They are going to feed you. Amen? Amen. Feed you. Feed you with what? Feed you with knowledge and understanding. Knowledge and understanding towards what? Towards scriptures. They are going to teach you. They are going to, to, to feed you with knowledge and understanding. Now, the word feed is a Greek word called ra. R-A-A-H. It means to shepherd. You know to shepherd? A shepherd. A shepherd. The one who shepherds like flocks. A shepherd knows where to take the sheep. A shepherd knows where to navigate. Is a navigator, so to say. Sheep cannot go where the shepherd does not want them to go. Sheep, they follow a shepherd. So now he said, I shall give you pastors according to my heart who shall shepherd you, who shall lead you in the world of scriptures and in the world of understanding. So what we are teaching or what we are doing here, we are leading you. Amen. Amen. We are shepherding you in the world of understanding and in the world of knowing what scripture. And then the same word, it means a teacher or it means to teach. So the mission of the pastor or the mission of, 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 of the fivefold ministry is to teach you. Finish. Amen. I shall give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart who shall teach you. Who shall teach you? So the mission that we have here is to teach you. And then when we teach you, what are we doing? We are giving you an understanding. When we are teaching, what are we doing? We are giving you knowledge. Isn't it? Amen. Knowledge concerning who? Concerning God. Knowledge concerning Jesus. Mm. We are not teaching you knowledge concerning how, how to marry five men. Ah. We are not giving you knowledge about how to make it in China, how to become a star. That is no sense. You can become a star today and tomorrow there is another star. So that is not the primary reason why we are teaching you. The primary reason why we are teaching you is that you may know God. Amen. 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 Please help me with this baby. The primary reason why we are teaching you is that you may know God. People of the Old Testament, they didn't know God. See, Moses or, or Jesus came and said, Father, I have come that they, they may know you. In the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 20, he said, And we know that the Son of God is come, and he has given us an understanding. He has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. Who is who is true. And we are in him who is true. Even Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? The true God. Who is the true God? The eternal life. So outside Jesus, we don't know God. That's why scriptures, they teach us about Jesus. Knowing Jesus, we are knowing God. That's what Jesus said. You cannot know God apart from me, or you cannot access God outside me. I am the exclusive way to God. Meaning, if you want to know God, know me. Scriptures, they point to Jesus. Knowing Jesus is knowing God. Amen. 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 So there, I will give you pastors who shall feed, Ra, which is to teach which is to pastor. Amen. Amen. First Peter chapter uh, chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1 verse 10, 11. So the mission, anytime the Bible is open to you, what you're supposed to be hearing is who? Jesus. We are going to explain what I mean by saying you're supposed to be hearing Jesus. Yes, sir. First Peter chapter 1. Yeah, verse 10. Verses 10 and 11. Yes. It says, of which salvation the prophets have inquired yes. and searched diligently, mm -hmm. who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Mm -hmm. Now, of which salvation the prophet? So, the prophets, they were saying, the grace is coming. The grace is coming. The grace is coming. And we not say the grace is Jesus Christ. 
The grace accompanies Jesus Christ. The grace accompanies what Jesus accomplished unto us. Amen. Amen. So we now know to say the mission of the prophets of the old day. We are saying the grace of Jesus is coming. So any time, that's why in the prophecy we see is Jesus. In the shadow of the Old Testament is Jesus. Even in the promises, it was Jesus. God told Abraham, I will give you a seed. The Bible says that seed was not Isaac, but that seed was Jesus. Meaning, even in the promises of the Old Testament, Jesus is still the one standing. So now we've come to review him. Wait, I'm just laying a foundation. I'm going somewhere. Amen. Amen. I'm going somewhere. So, we now know to say the prophets, which is Old Testament, they were talking about Jesus. Their prophecy. And the Bible says in the book of First, uh, First John, First Peter, sorry, it says, no prophet, in fact, the same one, no prophet of the Old Testament sat down to write what he was thinking. So, uh, I feel like I should prophesy. Uh, uh. The Bible says, when they prophesied, they were moved by the Holy Ghost to prophesy. Isn't it man of God? Yes, it is. They prophesied what the Holy Spirit put on them. They never imagined, say, ah, then I feel like prophesying. No, they never did that. Meaning, scriptures can be trusted. The Holy Ghost put the word on them so that they should prophesy concerning Christ what is going to happen to him. Amen. Amen. So Jesus, the message of the scripture. So now, Luke chapter 24, verse 44. Luke 24, 44. Luke 24, 44. Yes, sir. 44 says, mm -hmm. And he said unto them, yes. this th These are the words which I spoke unto you, yes, sir. while I was yet with you, mm -hmm. that all things must be fulfilled. That, see, this was the time when Jesus Christ died and he rose from the dead. When he rose from the dead, you know, his disciples, are, they had even given up on him. Come on, ah, no, he died, it's okay, he died, it's okay. Now when Jesus Christ rose, he said, no, see, these are the things I told you while I was alive. While I was with you, these are the things that I told you. Continue. Unto you, while I was yet with you, yes, sir. that all things must be fulfilled, mm -hmm. which were written in the law of Moses uh -huh. and in the prophets. Yes, and in the Psalms, yes. concerning me. So, Moses was writing things concerning who? Jesus. Prophets were prophesying things concerning who? Jesus. Yes. The songs of David, they were songs concerning who? Jesus. The songs of David, there, yeah, when you search properly, you shall find Jesus. The love that, that David was uh, uh, mentioning, it was the love concerning Jesus. So when you are reading songs of Solomon and say, you love whatever, whatever to me. It was the love concerning Jesus there. That is not the scripture to use to go and propose girls. That scripture is defeated not there. When you are reading that, that, that portion of the Bible, Amen. search for the love of Christ there. Amen. Search for the love of Christ there. Because he said, all things that were written in the songs, in the songs, of Solomon, they are mine. The songs of David, they are mine. So the Bible, the center of the Bible is who? Jesus. That's why the Bible is not the book where you are taught about how to make money. If you want to make money, go to the university. They will save you well. They will give you certificates or about to make money. But the Bible, whenever we open it, what you are supposed to teach you is Jesus. Amen. Amen. When the Bible is open, the one who is supposed to be read is Jesus. Not how to make money fast. Not to overtaking your overtaker. Not how to, to get waiting fast. It, it is not what the Bible talks about. The Bible is totality. It is the book that illustrates the love of God over history. The love of God over the world. This is what the Bible talks about. The love of God. Not how, how, how you can get married. That is the second thing that, in fact, that is not even what Christ came to do. Because those are natural things. They definitely happen. Amen. Amen. They definitely happen. You don't need prayer to get married. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Yes. You don't need to be prayed for. 
for you to get married. You will be married by the nature of your human being. A human being is supposed to marry for this reason, a man. So that, that's not a prayer point. That's not a prayer point. And that's not what Christ came to give you. No. Hallelujah. Christ did not come to give you a car. Eh -eh. You don't need Christ to have a car. You can have a car even minus Christ. How many, how many cars do these rich people have? It's not even cars. Even aeroplane, they have them. They own them. So you can own it if you have money. If you work well, you, 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 you operate according to the rules of this world. It gives you money. You can have many cars as possible. But that doesn't mean you need Christ to have those things. Those things are natural. Those are things which fade. They are things which fade. What Christ came to give you and me is something which is not corruptible. Is something which does not fade. A house can fade. Very soon we are planning to paint this one because the car has faded. Have you seen one of God? David Gogo? Yes. Yes, because the car has faded. So this is not what Christ came to give you. But am I trying to say that a Peter doesn't need this? No! You need them! How do you get these things? God gives you knowledge of how to operate this world and you have them. Amen. Isn't it? Amen. He gives you knowledge. He gives you know how to, how to operate, how to do business, how to go to school, and you have them as uh, like everyone is having them. It will never fall from heaven at me as pray too much. A house, I, the government will come and get it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it does not go like that. Amen. So now, the prophets, Moses, David, they were all writing concerning who? Jesus. First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 to 6. The message of the scriptures is Jesus. Sir, yeah. First Timothy chapter number 2, two verses 5 and 6. Yes, sir. The Bible says, mm -hmm. For there is one God, mm -hmm. and one mediator between God and men, mm -hmm. the man Christ Jesus. The man. There is only one God, and there is only one mediator who, who stands in between God and man. When you hear that there's only one God, there's how many gods? One. How many gods? One. How many gods? One. I think I will to get that. How many gods? One. There's only one God. So if they come to you and say you die tomorrow, you say, who, who say that? The gods are dead. We only have but one God. So, if you know what the same one God says concerning you, if you know what the same one God says about you, and then another God says something about you, are you going to be moved? No, because you know that there is only one God. So, this should, not, this should let you know to say, do not be afraid of any threats from anyone. I will, you will never succeed in that. Who said that? Because the only one God whom we recognize says, I know the good plans I have for you, plans to prosper you. And then a mere man comes to tell you, say, you will not prosper. Don't even say back to the sender. With knowing, say, that thing is a non entity, it can go nowhere. Such a people, you let them talk, talk, talk. They enter from here, they come from this side. Why? Because you know that it cannot happen. Amen. If you react, it means you are, you are, you are afraid that they will happen. Amen. If you react, it just say somewhere, somewhere, you are afraid. Hallelujah. Yes. There are things we hear people say, and we say scriptures. If they are not agreeing with us, the same things, leave them, leave them, leave them. Leave them. They say, ah, but you, you've got a good heart, John. All that which which is spoke about you, and you you didn't react. The reason why I never reacted, I weighed what she was saying. And I found that what she was saying has no impact on me. So instead of me wasting time to start exchanging words with him, which may lead the, the, the scenario to be big, in my wisdom, I keep quiet. With knowing, say, what he's saying, it will die with him. Me, what the word of God says, it will live with me. So there are things when you know the word of God, you don't even need that yet. Ah, the neighbor comes to you. And begin to say, this and that to you. This and that to you. Not your honor. You're not caught. Not your honor. Not your honor. You're not caught. For what now? No. I have a news that is a marina. If you have a news, that's an empire. If you have a news. You. 
<laughs> Even if the father and the mother and their grand they, they worship devil, nothing can happen to you. Why? Because in him we live, we move, we have our being. Praise the Lord. Satan cannot kill you inside him. Because for Satan to kill you, he has first of all to enter in him. He has first of all to defeat God, and that's when he will defeat you. And you know that cannot happen, now. Huh? Amen. So there are some of the things you just look at them and keep quiet. That serves you better. And that's how even you are, that's how you are trapped. This is how me, this is how I have made a lot of guys to, 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 to love God. He will say something, he will do something, expecting me to you know sir. I remember when I was when I studied in my school, when I studied in my school, you know, I was sitting somewhere in front. I don't like sitting by uh, behind it uh, in school. Mm -hmm. I love sitting in front. So you know, I, I, I was sitting in front and then when I, I, I went to school the, the, the following day, I found the same guy sat where I was sitting. I said, ah, sir, this is where I see this and that. Ah, the guy is something. The guy spoke all manner of words. Because the gun is up. Uh, not like telling me, you know, shouting everywhere. So me I stood and I began to see him shout. Because the gun is this and that, this and that, this and that, this and that. Mm -hmm. What is wrong? Just now. You know what I did, sir? Mm -hmm. I said, ah, no. It is well, it's okay, you can sit here. That's how I went to sit behind. I sit in the back and I began to thank God. Why did this happen? You know, why did this happen? That's how I forgot about that. And then the following day, I greeted him. How are you, sir? Not even showing that I was annoyed. What did you do? Uh -uh. I greeted him. He answered me. And the following day, he saw me preaching in front. He ah, He's a pastor. Yeah. Ah. You know, from that day, the man started giving me respect. From that day, the man, this and that, this and that. You see? Amen. So I taught him a lesson to say, ask people like us. The things you talk to us about, we just look at them, we leave them on the ground. They will teach you a lesson say it is not everyone you insult. The pain I was supposed to feel of the insult, you are the one who felt them. Why? Because me, I never reacted evil over evil. Me, I used the good to defeat evil. So this is how to go about in life. People insult you, people do this and that. The Bible says that do not repay evil for evil. Amen. And I'm telling you, the following day I found this guy going to check with the Bible. Okay. Mm. Mm. There where I was going to see we got like Jesus generation at church. Uh -huh. At the school there. He went, I found him there. And on that day I was given, I, I was given the podium to preach again. I preached and he became my best friend. Praise the Lord. He became my best friend. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, this is how to go about they that know their God. Amen. They that know their God. They shall do exploit. The Bible talks of how people trusted in God and God has killed them. Daniel, we know the story of Daniel. We know the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those are not just stories made from the figment of people. It happened. And whatsoever was written, it was written for us to learn. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you the truth. Getting on top there is not the problem. But what to keep you there is your character. You get? Amen. Becoming a priest is not a problem. You can deceive us, so I'll give you houses. I'll bring free water. I'll bring free whatever. We shall vote for you. When you go there, we are waiting for what you promised us. If we don't see it, we are going to bring you down again. So, character is what to sustain you. Character is what to keep you reigning there. So that's why that's why scriptures are given to us for collection. 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 When you are corrected by the scripture, there's the way even your action becomes to be controlled. There's the way your life becomes to be begins to be sharpened. There's the way your life becomes admirable. Why? Because scriptures are the one that work in you. Hallelujah. Amen. Allow scriptures to teach you. Allow scripture to lead you. Amen. Amen. Continue, sir. 6 says, uh, 1 Timothy 2, 6, mm -hmm. who gave himself a ransom for all mm -hmm. to be justified wow. in due time. No, 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 read that well. Okay. Don't be justified. To be justified in due time. Mm -hmm. So Jesus, he gave himself as a ransom, as a ransom to all. Amen. Amen. 
ransom to all for what it means oh, to be testified in due time. So what we are supposed to testify right now is you, Jesus. Whenever we open the Bible, what we are supposed to testify about is you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. The same word, testify, testify, or testimony, testify, is a Greek word called maturio. Hallelujah. Amen. Maturion. Maturion means witness. Witness. So there, Jesus, he gave himself as a ransom for us, for us to be a witness of him in due time, like what we are doing right now. What am I witnessing right now? I'm witnessing Jesus. Isn't it? Amen. So, Jesus, he gave himself as a ransom so that we may witness him, so that we may proclaim him, and then so that we may testify about him. Hallelujah. Amen. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Mm. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Yes, sir. Scripture says, mm. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, yes, and by the word of their testimony. They overcame Satan. They overcame him by the blood. Are you hearing? Amen. By the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their what? Testimony. By the way of their testimony. This word testimony there, it means maturia. Taken from the word maturio. Maturia. And the word maturia, it means witness. This word they overcame Satan by the word of their testimony. It is not the word like, hallelujah, I've got a testimony. I bought a new jacket. That is not the word which can defeat Satan. The word, the, the, the testimony, which defeats Satan is the testimony which tells you to say Christ paid for you. Satan can do nothing. Like what I'm doing to you now, telling you to say, no one can kill you. Why? Because Christ has paid the price for you. When you hear that and you believe it, you have overcome Satan. So the word testimony there, maturia, it means to give, to give witness to a judge. You get? Amen. They arrest this one. They say, on Monday, around 19 hours, he left a certain girl there. I'll go there as a witness. That, eh, that what you are saying is a lie. I was with him. We were in the ministry. We were preaching this and that. I am giving testimony concerning this one. Amen. Amen. And because I produce evidence, he will be released. People will believe in him. Say, ah, this one, he was free. He's innocent. Because... The other one, he has brought evidence. Where is evidence? Here. They even recorded the message. The one who was even doing what? Reading the scriptures. And it is even showing the time they were doing the death. This one is free. Why? They will believe in him because I have given testimony about him. So that's what the Bible means. They, say, they overcame Satan by the weight of their testimony. The weight of their testimony, which is maturia, is testifying concerning what Christ has done. Amen. You get Amen. It's not testimony like I bought a car. It's a fallacy. That's the second. In fact, that cannot even move Satan. You get Amen. What do what do Satan do with material? Satan, if you want, he can make cars here. Whatever kind of car you are talking about, he can make. He can make houses. He gives people houses. Eh? God, John is an he will give you a house. He will give you a car. So that is not something which can defeat Satan. Hallelujah. Amen. The only thing that defeats Satan is the blood of Jesus and the testimony of what Christ has done. Amen. You get? Amen. Amen. So, I hope I've cleared that part. Amen. If you want to defeat Satan, go and preach Christ. Amen. If you want to defeat Satan in your life, go and preach Christ. The more you preach Christ, the more Satan is today. You know what, man of God? Yes, sir. Satan, if, let me tell you something. Satan, the kingdom of Satan is not in the sky. You understand? Amen. Like other people do say, the kingdom of Satan is not in the sky. People, they say, ah, pray, man of God, pray, sir. In the sky, there's a safer. When you're praying, your, your, your prayers will be bumped down. There are, there are angels which stop the, the, the prayer of Daniel. So your prayer, if it is not going with the power, it will be bouncing on the safer there. It's a lie. Mm. Satan is not in the sky. Mm. Where is Satan? Satan is in the hearts of men. So if you want to deny Satan access, let me 
people be born again? When people are born again, you are trying to uproot the kingdom of Satan from, from people. That's why, if you hear that Satan wake, use the people. Amen. Anywhere you hear that at Satan and a seven zapper, a man, human being was involved. Because Satan without man, he cannot do anything. Amen. No people take the ass at Satan and seven He used me. So if you want to stop all those nonsense, let people be born again. When people are born again, that's why evangelism is warfare. The Bible says the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but the mighty through God, the pulling down of every stronghold. So Satan has constructed his stronghold in the minds of people. Amen. People that are sitting there thinking evil. Mm, how am I going to make Simon die? How am I going to kill him? Mm, they are thinking evil. They are thinking evil. Satan is even empowering those thoughts. Uh, you know what to do? You should stand there. Most of the time, he likes coming along with the keyboard. When you see him there, just run and stab him. Satan is, is, is working in the minds of people. So if you want to deny him access, let men be born again. Because when men are born again, they will have a clear conscience of God. The Satan, if we can get the whole child born again, all this we are hearing in Popeye, we can never hear them anywhere. Amen. Why? Because Satan has constructed his stronghold in the minds of people. Amen. Amen. You don't do warfare on your knees. <laughs> warfare is on the foot. Going to preach. Going to preach. When you go to preach, ha! Let me tell you something. If people they don't hear the word, they will never be born again. Even if you pray for them. Jesus said what? The, 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 what's this? The labor is big, but the labor has a few. You get? Jesus said, pray that the Father may send a lot of laborers. Meaning, without laborers, nothing happens. Your prayer cannot get people born again. What to get people born again is hearing the word of God. How can they believe on him whom they have not heard? How can they hear him when he's not preached? How can they preach if they are not sent? So, there's supposed to be a preacher who is sent to go and preach for men to be born again. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yeah. So, Satan is not in the sky. Leave that thing. Even when you are praying, the, the prayer does not go in heaven. It goes inside you because God is inside you. What you are talking of the Savior. Before you pray, I have heard you. You are talking of the Savior. God is not waiting for you to pray to answer you. Eh, eh. Even before you open your mouth, He answered you already. All the answers you need, they are inside you in Christ. In Him, all the promises of God are yes and they may. And where are you? You are inside Him. So where you are, there is no, there's nothing like an answer to prayer. All the prayer you offer in Him is yes and they may. Yes and they may is not spoken by you. Yes and they may is spoken inside Him already. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you pray and something does not manifest, it doesn't mean your prayer does not answer. Keep on it. It will come. Amen. It will come. Ah, you know, when I'm looking at the snow sign, you are, you, are, you are confused. You don't know. That's why you need to be taught. The way we are teaching you. The way we are teaching you. The way we are teaching you. You will see things changing in life. So, their testimony. I, I have explained, it is not you saying, I bought something. Eh, eh, eh. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans chapter 16, verse 25. Romans 16, verse 25. Romans chapter 16, verse 25. Yes, sir. All right. Um, the Bible says in Romans 16, 25, mm -hmm. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel mm -hmm. and the preaching of Jesus Christ. So, the message of Apostle Paul was the message of what? Preaching about who? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. 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 He personalized it. He said, to him who is of power to establish you according to my gospel. Amen. To my gospel. The gospel of Apostle Paul was the gospel of preaching Christ. He said, brethren, when I came among you, I did not do nothing other than Christ. Mm. And the Bible says, I count all these things that done as at the expense of knowing Christ. So everything that you should be knowing, that you should know is Christ. Mm. You, you will see where I'm going. I want to speak something that is out of me. The message of Apostle Paul was the message of Christ. 
your message as well. It's supposed to be the message of Christ. The problem is the message we are hearing today is the message about Satan. It's the message about Satan, man of God. Yes. Go everywhere. The message about demons. You find that the man of God is teaching title of demons. Ah, how can demons be title of the Bible, eh? Demons. And they even bring now names of demons. There's Queen Sheba. Queen Sheba, she operates in Ephesus. There is Bella. Bella. There's Queen Bella. Ada, at Bella works where? Bella. She is a... Hey, marine spirit. There's Obanje. Obanje. There is Ashmorit. There is at Amanga. There is Greek. I don't even know where they are getting names of demons, 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 demons. Yeah, and they teach you. So now, you find that someone is coming from church carrying the Bible. Ah, church was powerful today. Why did you learn? We learned Kinibera. We learned Ashimoruti. We learned Obanji. We learned Marine Water. Mami Water. Ah, where is Mami Water in the Bible now? The Bible does not talk of Mami Water. So when we open the Bible, we teach you what is written. We don't teach you what we saw in the dream. We don't teach you what we dream. We teach you what is in the Bible. Because what is in the Bible is what you need to hear. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Christ. The message of the scripture. Not Mami Water. Who is Mami Water? Who is Mami Water? Ah. Ah, why are they giving you syllabuses which does not even fit in the Bible? Don't sit down to be told about that. And you know what? This is how demons operate. This is how even how they enter you. They'll teach you mommy water. They'll say mommy water when he comes at night. If you have got weeks, it's mommy water. These trousers, they are for opanji. They'll teach you all kinds of when you dream. You begin to dream mommy water. You begin to dream of one day. You begin to dream this and that. And your life is full of fear. Your life is full of fear. Why? Because what has occupied your mind is demons. The Bible says that those are things we, we, we are demolishing. Mm. Things that exalt themselves above the knowledge of God. Let me tell you something. When we teach you about Christ, when we teach you about what Christ has done, mm. name all kinds of demons. They have nothing to do with you. Why? Because Christ is the solid block. The Bible says there is the head of principalities and the power. Mm. All principalities and power they hear to him. When we teach you Christ, 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 there is no demon mm. that can come and start standing ahead because I'm mommy water. Where? And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Man of God. Yes. For lack of studious studying of the Bible, people are using movies they are watching in Nigeria. That's what they are using to, to teach you. We don't use movies to teach you the Bible. We use the Bible. We use the revelation. I will give you pastors according to my heart who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding concerning Christ, not concerning demons. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. From Genesis. To Revelation, the Bible talks of Christ. But why are you mentioning demons? Why are you putting demons? They will say, no, you need to have knowledge about demons. You don't need them. You need to have knowledge concerning Christ. Oh, yeah. Not demons. Oh, yeah. You need to have knowledge concerning Christ and what he has done for you. Period. Not about how you die, how you are living in fear. No, yeah. pray for your spoon. Before you eat, pray for your spoon. Pray for water. Pray for dish. Pray for chairs. Pray. They are giving you bed dead. Demons are powerful. Hey! When you open the oven, you can find that they are there. Pray for the oven. Pray for the bathroom. Pray for everything. Pray for these demons are there. They are giving you head dead. You don't have freedom. Father, I pray for this charge. Even before I drag my phone, no demon will enter. You are, you are, you are totally confused. Amen. That is punishment. Amen. Christ has freed us from all powers of darkness. Sometimes when you are tired, just be the end man praying. God protect you because you are his child. He cannot protect you because you pray. Eh, eh. There were days you were not praying, but he protected you. He protects you because he loves you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He gives you because he loves you. 
There is nothing you do to make God love you more than He loves you now. He loved you even when you were a sinner. Now that you have repented, what can you offer Him that He loves you more? Mm. Nothing. It may make any sense to you. Amen. <laughs> so, let nobody. Acts chapter 9, verse 20. And in fact, start from 18. This was the time when Apostle Paul got born again. He was blind when he was going to Damascus. Do you remember the story? Yes. He, he got blind when he was going to Damascus to kill, to get more of the way to kill Christians. Mm. He met Jesus there. Mm. He met him blind and told him, say, go to a man of God, Anania, who shall pray for you to see. And when Anania prayed him, something came out of his eyes. See the message he went to. Start from 18. Acts chapter 9 verse 18. Mm -hmm. Scripture says, and immediately yes. there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. Yes. And he received sight forthwith. Yes. And arose and was baptized. Mm -hmm. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Yes. Then was he so certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. Yes. And straight away he preached Christ in the synagogues that that he is the son of God. Did he preach demons? No. no. Did he preach Ashmobi? No. no. Did he preach Mami Water? No. no. Whom did he preach? Christ. That Christ is what? Is the son, son of, of God. God. This is the testimony you and me were supposed to carry to people outside there. Mm. Don't tell them things that will bring them fear. Tell them things that will give them comfort. The word of God is called good news. There's no way you can hear good news and be, begin to feel fear. No, that does not apply. He went and preached Christ. The first time, go. He went to do his ministry. Christ, you, you're preaching Ashmore. What did you get Ashmore for? Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Acts chapter 5, verse 42. Hey. Acts, Acts chapter 5, verse 42. Acts 5, 42 says. Pay attention to what the word is saying there. Please help me this out. Please, please, please. Acts yes. 5 42 says, Yes, and daily in the temple, yes, and in every house, yes, they ceased not what daily where in the temple and where in every house, daily in the temple and every house. The way we are doing here, mm. do not is daily, daily. The way we do here, daily in the temple, meaning we church in Manyumba. Uh -huh. Daily in the temple and in every house, yes. they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. They ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. So everywhere you went, mukanda ku church, mumbera Jesus Christ. Mukabuya ma denomination, mumbera Jesus Christ. Mukanda ku church, mumbera Jesus Christ. Mukabuya ma denomination, mumbera Jesus Christ. Now I don't know if men of God are tired of preaching Jesus. Mukanda ku church, mami wota. Mukanda ku ma denomination, obanje. Mukanda ku church, mendo pesa admono. Mukanda ma denomination, mendo pesa wilbera. Where is Christ? What where is Christ? Where where have you put Christ? We have run away from it. That's why me, God, when he called me, I remember that day, he told me, Son, I am sending you into the world to preach Christ because Christ has been pushed away of the church. Put you back about church. To church go to Kela, message on prosperity. Today we are going to teach about prosperity. How to make it in life. How to become the next devotee. Amen. They use scriptures. Abraham was wealthy. Uh, who else? Solomon was was wealthy. They will talk about the, all these guys who were wealthy, wealthy, wealthy. They will give you as evidence from the Bible. You need to be rich. You will be rich. Hallelujah. Say Amen. You will be rich. Amen. No Christ. Amen. What they just the, human thinking. That's not what the Bible. That's not why the Bible was written. The Bible was written so that you may know Christ and what He has done for you and me. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the mission of the Bible. Now, see, the word there, they did not stop preaching Jesus Christ. Now, the word teach there, teach, is the word, Greek word called didasko. Didasko, taken from the word didaskada, which is talking. You get? So now, didasko, it means to instill doctrine into one. Daily in the temple, they were teaching doctrine 
and the doctrine of Christ. I remember teaching the doctrine of Christ. They were teaching about the doctrine of Christ, instilling the doctrine of Christ in somebody. Every day, when you go, they will instill. What well, we'll of doctrine, teaching. They were teaching them what Christ has done for them. Everywhere they went, they would go to church, they will hear Christ redeemed you. They come to denomination, they will hear Christ has made you a victor. If they go to church, they will hear Christ has made you a power. Every time they kept on hearing, hearing Christ. That's why when we read the church of the, of the early church, it was the church of the power of God. Full of the demonstration of the power of God. Why? Because the center of the message was Christ. That even the shadow of people were hearing people. Why? Because Christ, he became big in the inside of people. Hallelujah. Amen. He's stealing. Kungenesa. Forcing the doctrine. That's why if you don't have doctrine as a Christian, you are wasted material. Mm. You need to have the doctrine of Christ. What I mean by saying the doctrine of Christ, I mean you need to know what Christ has done that you are convinced beyond doubt. Hallelujah. When, when, when you start to say me, I cannot be possessed. That is doctrine. You get? That is doctrine. Because I know when you go outside, they will come and tell you, say, why did you react like that? Una chiva anda yo. So you chiva anda from where? I cannot be possessed. You, why? Because doctrine has been instilled in you. Every time we come here teaching you the word of God and then they tell you that you you not sure and then you ask it when do they do deliverance, then you are something else. Hallelujah. Amen. So preaching or teaching, they cease not to teach Christ. They were instilling the doctrine of Christ. And then the word didasco, it also means to explain or expound things. So anytime they went to church. They were explaining Christ to them. They were expounding Christ to them. Like what I'm doing right now. Expounding Christ what he has done. Oh, Christ came to save you from your sins. So you are no longer a sinner. Even if you make a mistake, you are not a sinner. Why? Because Christ, he died for you. They expound every day. Don't forget, every day. You will come to my prayers. Ah, my prayers. Every day, I mean, I put your break. Break so that you go away. Every day, and my Malema, my prayer to Brother Simon now, Sam Malema. The Bible says every day. Every day. And let me tell you something. His prayers, me and the man of God, they are the one which has preserved us. Amen. You get? Just imagine, because every, every, every day, it is a day. What we, we think of is the prayers. How is it going to be today? What am I going to preach about today? You know, it gives me the appeal to start thinking about the word of God. It gives me the appeal. Now, if we had nothing about this thing of preaching the word of God, in my time, I don't know what we could have been thinking. Could have been, what? Come here, you can clap. Eh, can you see and clap? Dear boy, dear. We have nothing to think about. So, we could have been thinking about something that would have led us astray. But every day, I'm just thinking, mm, Greek word, what is the Greek word for this thing? Oh, this is, so we get to be edified by the word of God. We study. Don't think that they just fall from heaven. It takes time and hours to study for me to come up with these things and for you to get them to understand them. I study. I take time to study. Hallelujah. Amen. So this word, these things we are teaching you, they are your life. Amen. They are your life. We have a lot of men of God. We, like I've been saying, we studied a lot here. A lot, a lot, a lot. Today when we meet them, some of them have even married. Some of them, some of our friends have even married. Some of them when we meet them, they smoke. Some of them, they, now they, they even stop smoking in the heat then. They smoke even on the fabric because you cannot hide any longer. But as we are still here, what is making us to be like this? Staying in the scriptures. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Teaching people what you practice. Not it. Musasi ganda akasi. But you know saying it is normal. You become an hypocrite. So we find that you cannot live a righteous life because you yourself you are condemned inside you. Hallelujah. Amen. So teaching, explaining. Ah, that word. That word. Preaching. Because daily in the temple and in every house. They cease not to teach and preach, isn't it? Yes. The word preach there is a Greek word called 
Eucariazon. Eucariazon. And Eucariazon means instruction or to instruct men concerning the things that pertains to Christian salvation. You get? Instructing. So these people were being instructed towards Christianity, towards things that pertain to salvation. Salvation, 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 soteria, soteria, telling you of your deliverance, telling you Jesus has saved you, telling you Jesus has separated you. These were the things which people were being taught each and every day. Not, not mami wata, opanje. That's not what they were being told here. Amen. 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 They were telling them about salvation. As we, we come here, we say, the topic of the message, the message we are about to preach there is salvation. Ah, salvation again. You, you need to, re, to be learning salvation each and every day. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to be learning that every day, what Christ has done for you. Acts chapter 8, verse 5. Hmm. Very soon I'll be done. Acts 8, 5. Yes. The scriptures declares, then Philip went to the city of Samaria uh -huh. and preached Christ unto them. Read that one. Then Philip went to Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria. Yes. And preached Christ unto them. What did Philip preach? Christ. What did Philip preach? Christ. Yesterday I told you said Philip was a mere man, a deacon. The one who was in charge of distributing food. You remember that story of distributing food? Yes. Philip and the and the, who is this one who was stone, sir? Stephen, Stephen was one of those guys who were chosen to do what? To be common, common men. But because of what was being taught in that church, every time when they go to church, they will hear what Christ has done for them. Every time when they go to church, they will hear what they can do in Christ. Every time they go to church, they will hear about Christ. So now, it provoked them to go and share him to others. You know, Philip began now to have crusades. So this is very big. And when he went there, he preached Christ. He preached Christ. Why? Because he was receiving Christ. So you can only release what you are being given. Every day when we are teaching you Christ here, we know say you are going to preach Christ today. That's why we keep on teaching you Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So anyone, anyone can preach Christ. Let me end with this one. First John chapter 3 verse 10. First John chapter 3 verse 10. First John chapter 3 verse 10. Yes, sir. Scripture says, it, um, in this the children of God are manifest yes. and the children of the devil whosoever doth not righteousness is of is not of God. Okay. You know, sir, there is a misconception which even men of God. That's why. You know what you people? The Bible was written in Greek and Hebrew. Mm. You get Was written in Hebrew and uh, Greek. So what we do, we go to the original Bible to get what it says and present to you. Because when you just scratch this interpretation of the Bible or translation of the Bible, there are a lot of things. You know, there is a word which I can speak in Tonga. It may not have the same meaning in Bemba. You get Yes. There is a way that I will speak in Yanja. When you translate it directly into your language, it means something else. Amen. Hallelujah. You need to go around to make a meaning of it. But you find that in that language, it is the way it is and it means what it means. But in the other language, you need to create a meaning. So, what was written in Greek? When you translate it into English, it means something else. It, it just needs a, a, an explanation to reach there. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we go to the real meaning of some words which brings doubt and confusion in the mind of people to tell them what it means. Now you hear a lot of men of God will be saying like, you a child, when you say you are a child of God, it means you are young. No. Have you seen? Like, man, child, man, man, I don't know if it is. Going in mm -hmm. When you say child, this is what a lot of men of God say. When you mean child, you mean 
you born you are you are not born again. When you are born again, eh, you are born again a child. You begin to grow, to grow, to grow. You become a son now. That is not what the Bible says here. Okay. Amen. Amen. The Bible there which says children. It does not mean like children. Eh? It means it's a Greek word called technon. Technon means offspring. Offspring means lineage. You know offspring? Offspring? What's your name, sir? Zul. Yes. He is the offspring of the Zulus. Offspring means lion coming from somebody. Amen. So when we say we are the children of God, we mean we are coming from God. We mean we are in the line of God. We mean we are carrying the DNA of God. We mean us and God, we are one. So that's what it means when you say children there. So when you say, I'm a child of God, don't see yourself like you are young. This is, I'll show you the, the script, which means those children. Amen. Amen. John, John chapter 1 verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12. Yes, sir. Uh, scripture says, uh -huh. But as many as received him, uh -huh. to them gave he power uh -huh. to become the sons of God. Have you seen? This is why they confuse it. They say, when you are born again, you are a child. You begin to grow, to grow, to grow into a son. Isn't it? That's what they say. That word son is a Greek word, technon. Technon means offspring. So these are just semantics, exchanging of words. When you go to the real Bible, which is Greek, there it means technon. Even there where there is a child, it means techne. So all these, they just mean the same. There is nothing like when you are born again today, you are a child, you go and you say, eh, eh. There it is that the same, you are from God. You are born, when you are born again, you are a child of God. You are born a son. Hallelujah. Amen. You are born a son. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, Ephesians. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, this is when our son is a child, like a child did. Now, where is coming from? Ephesians chapter 4 starts from 10. Ephesians 4.10 says, uh -huh. He that descended yes. is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens. Yes. That he might feel all things. Yes. And he gave some apostles. Yes. And some prophets. Yes. And some evangelists. Yes. And some pastors. Mm -hmm. And some teachers. Mm -hmm. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So, why did Jesus give the fight for the ministry? Why are there pastors? Why are there prophets? Why are there apostles? Why are there evangelists? Is to teach you, to edify you, so that you may go and do ministry there. When you are you, are, you go to do ministry, you are edifying the body of Christ. Isn't it? Amen. Continue, sir. Uh, it says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Yes. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. Why are you, why are we teaching to? So that we may come to the knowledge of the Son of God. So the mission of the prophet is not to be saying, ah, Chris, you are 21. I see the uh, 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 C. Why? What is C? C. Chris, ah, I start with C. Uh, uh. That is not the mission of the prophet. The mission of the prophet is to feed you with knowledge so that we come to the unit of the knowledge of Jesus. That's what the Bible says. Yes, sir. Continue, sir. Um, till we all come in the unity of faith yes. and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Yes. And to a perfect man. And to a perfect man, yes. And to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So that we may manifest the fullness of Christ, yes. That... We henceforth be no more children. That we henceforth be no more children. Uh -huh. Toast. Toast. To and fro. To and fro. And carried, uh, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Carried about with the wind of doctrine. Now, when you go to the Greek Bible, that word, children, but that we henceforth be no more children. The word children, it means nepios. You understand? Nepios. And the nepios means untaught. Unskilled. Childish. Hallelujah. Where they are saying, today we are breaking generational cases. Today, they 
is anointing oil, Muriko. You are tossed to and fro with diverse doctrine. You are not straight. You are not standing. Everything they introduce, Muyenda. Kogwera wa meja one, Muyenda. Kogwera wa meja seventeen, Muyenda. Kogwera wa meja seventeen, Muyenda. You, you are tossed to and fro. So there is a need of doctrine. What doctrine does it make you stand? When you hear that a pastor is selling anointing salt, you won't go. Why? Because you know that you have the anointing in you. When you hear a pastor is selling holy water, 200 per bottle, you won't go. Because you know, say, out of your belly flows the living waters. Hallelujah. So, we, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. So, children in Christianity, they are those who, who accept every doctrine. Hallelujah. Amen. When the Bible says child or children, it means those who are carried about with every kind of doctrine. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we be on our feet?